the Indian women's team created history as they won their match against Georgia and are now in the finals of FIDE World Women's Team Championship. In the first match, they drew and in the second match, they won. There were a lot of exciting games and now I'll be covering those in a moment. Let us begin with the game by Harika against uh, Nana Zagnidze. In this game, Harika was black and uh, she drew the game. Her opponent repeated uh, in, this, in this game and interestingly, Harika had already played until this position in Istanbul 2012 Olympiad. And I think a draw was a great result here because she was black and it also gave uh, a po half point to the team. And next, let's go to Vaishali. Vaishali was white against Nino and Nino is a very good positional player. I had got a chance to play against her in uh, Chennai Open and she has a very nice feeling for the positions that she plays. And uh, in this game, oh, her opponent chose a very weird or very unusual way of playing the rider plays with a knight on c6 and e7 and this bishop on a7 and it's called the deferred classical defense or the morphe defense even i was not aware of the name and in this position after king h8 <clears throat> interestingly seturaman had played this position with the white side against kartik and uh, last month in barcelona seturaman went for bishop on c6 but uh, here um, Vaishali chose a slow approach with h3 and she managed to get a very good uh, position out of the opening and after a few moves she was already slightly better in this position cd4 was also an interesting possibility but she decided to go with bishop d4 the critical moment in this game came after rook d8 she was slightly better but in this position she blundered a pawn she played king h5 and her opponent just grabbed a pawn uh, the best move for black is to play bishop d5 and grab the f pawn but her opponent took knight into bishop and she captured the d pawn now that gave some play to white and uh, eventually the position uh, was balanced and uh, later vaishali drew the game next we have leila javakshvili versus bhakti kulkarni and uh, um, Bhakti played the Bogo Indian with the black side and I think she had a reasonable position out of the opening and the game was equal for a long period and uh, on the 70th move there was a cunning trap set by her opponent and uh, Bhakti overlooked it. Uh, if you look at this position and ask what could go wrong for black it's very hard to pinpoint but there is one element uh, which black has to take care and that is the knight on d4. You wouldn't expect the knight in the center to get trapped but in this case that is the situation after knight e3 white has a dangerous idea white has slowly in the last two moves managed to uh, play a few moves just to shuffle around and then in this moment after knight d4 white has played knight e3 and is now threatening something really cunning here her opponent uh, played knight e3 and here bhakti played bishop b7 which turned out to be a heavy blunder the reason being that after bishop b7 white has bishop c4 and this knight on d4 doesn't have a square you can see that all the squares are covered king e4 is unstoppable and black loses piece by force so what she should have done instead is bishop d7 and after bishop c4 king f6 making sure that whenever king comes to e4 f5 is threatened if the knight gives a check then you come back and if the knight goes back you come back to f6 again so this was a, a way to make a draw but uh, in this moment bhakti went for bishop b7 and she lost the piece and the game and then it was all up to marianne gomes to uh, tie the scores and she had to win and uh, she employed the rate that she has been doing uh, throughout the event i think in this game um, she played at a very different level. There were literally no mistakes at all in the way she converted her advantage into a full point. Uh, let me come to the critical position after ed4 and bishop to b7. In this position, black has a way to make a draw, but is to be very precise. Rook c1 check is important, and after rook c1, bishop c1. The point is b2 or e5, one of the pawn falls, and if you let's say try to defend with bishop a3 then you can just take the pawn on e5 so 
Black had this chance and uh, in this position her opponent missed it and played rook c2. And from here until the very end, Marian Gomes kept great control and converted the advantage into a full point. She played rook into a5 and uh, then she ties the rook with rook b5 and this rook has no freedom now and ha has to like uh, get exchanged. This rook is active so what she does is she exchanges off the active rook and then plays with her two bishops and the rook. So after rook b1, king g2, bishop c2 seemed like a, almost like a force move and after rook into c2, rook into b1, bishop into b1, she played bishop d5. This is the new weakness. It's not possible or let's say it's not so easy for black to cover f7 and, um, and because of this, you know, she managed to extend her advantage. She put rook a4, she's threatening rook a7 and uh, after rook a7, bishop e6, now you can see that she's a clean pawn up and the way she converts this again is very effortless. She brings a king, exchanges of the bishop. If the opponent is not agreed to an exchange, then she starts to uh, uh, advance her pawns and then uh, she eventually wins the piece and then her opponent resigns after rook b8. I think very well played game, very clean game by Marion Gomes. Next we come to uh, Harika Dronavali again. This time Harika was white and she chose the exchange variation against the Kalpa. And until here we are following the game between Aronian and Namedyarov. But in this particular position, uh, Nana deviates from the Mamedyarov game and plays queen b6 which is a novelty. But uh, Harika responds with queen b3 and uh, she again kept a slight but nagging edge. It was always uh, it was always as if white is better, better, better and black has to strive hard to equalize. This is I think a very good approach especially in team events where you are keeping the tension for a long period and uh, you always have, uh, uh, it's like you are always playing for two results and there is no risk at all. So slowly she um, kept playing and I think there was one moment where she could have uh, probably got more. Uh, let me come to that position. After a lot of pieces got exchanged and when her opponent played rook c8, I think the moment was this one. She could play bishop f4 here so that the bishop comes to e3. Uh, the bishop is uh, I think better placed in this diagonal because gf4 is met by rook d4 but here she played bishop g3 and after rook c1 and rook d1 black has an active rook and which ensures that uh, you know black has enough play so the game petered out into a draw as uh, as a result of massive exchanges that took place as you can see and i think still this is a good result because again we get half a point and it puts more pressure on the other teammates uh, of the position uh, let's let's go to yeah so after Harika drew I think uh, it put a lot of pressure on the Gre on the uh, Georgian team and then we had the game between Nina and uh, uh, Nino and Vaishali so here in Vaishali's game um, you must have seen that in one of the highlights that I did Vaishali's opponent played English and uh, it was a very difficult uh, game for Vaishali in this game, her opponent has again employed for English, but we see a switch from Vaishali. She's played bishop b4 line. I think this is a line that's also been employed by Adiban. And knight d5, bishop e7, b3. Uh, let me go to the critical position after knight f3. In this game, Vaishali took a very uh, aggressive approach and uh, she kept her opponent uh, in control and never allowed opponent to come back. Uh, basically, she was playing for initiative throughout, as you can see from here. She played e4, attacking the knight, and then d5. After c5, knight d5, bishop e2, she kicks the knight out of the center and then plays queen g5. The drawback of the bishop on e2 is that the g2 is undefended. White had to go castle in this position, but she was probably worried about uh, bishop h3. And the move here is knight e1, but this did not happen. After knight c2, queen g5, her opponent conceded and played g3, which is a weakness because black has bishop h3, preventing white from castling. And after f4, ef3, bishop f3, black has great initiative and white's problem is the king on e1. Uh, white tried hard to solve the problems, but um, Vaishali was always a step ahead. She developed her pieces quickly and uh, 
even managed to win an exchange here because of the powerful knight on d3 that's a monster and after rook f1 she exchanged that and i i really love another maneuver that she did in the game and that is after queen g6 queen g2 now this knight on d3 has done its job so she comes back very elegantly with knight f4 point is ef4 is met by rook d4 and when you are ahead in material you can welcome exchanges so in this position after knight f4 queen g3 she came back with a knight to e6 to disrupt this bishop which means that black gets an entry on the d-line so this was a very well played again by um, vaishali so after this win we were now leading by uh, one and half half and then came the result of uh, mary and gomes so against mary and gomes mary and gomes employed the bogo indian against leila and after queen e3 i think this was a critical moment mary and gomes could have probably played knight b7 and the idea is that let's say if white plays bishop s3 then you put this knight on c5 and keep the balance but after knight into b3 what it did was that it invited the a2 pawn to join forces and come to b3 which made the outpost on c5 insecure because white always has b4 so this meant that white was better uh, for most part of the game in the remaining portion of the game Marian Gomes got one chance and I think that was after queen b2 where she could have played bishop into b5 and if uh, rook into b5 then queen b2 followed by b5 so that the b pawn is not compressed and black has active chances based on this e4 pawn can attack for example if you play rook b1 black will go rook a4 and then attack this and then if you play f3 black has b4 in in event of uh, queen takes a2 here you just take rook a2 and then play rook a2 and uh, and then you play for the seventh rank counterplay for example if rook c4 then you leave the pawn on b6 and play for counterplay on the seventh rank i think that was uh, one last chance that she had but after after that after missing that i think white always kept pressure and she eventually um, i mean white managed to win this game so that means the scores were tight one and a half one and a half and it all came down to the last game between tanya sestev and mary arabidze and then this game after queen b3 uh, c5 so very um, weird uh, sacrifice that came i mean when i saw it i got shocked but the engines actually feel that it's viable after queen c2 g5 bishop g3 her opponent came up with rook into b2 now this was a shock uh, at least to me it was shock when i saw it and the point is after queen b2 black has 94 now in addition to this being a very tactical uh, variation it also comes with a shock value because tanya is probably not expecting such a move and she's not even sure if her opponent is bluffing or if it's a real sacrifice so i think to come out of this situation and win the game is remarkable after knight e4 here i would have played rook c1 but queen f6 has to be like you have to be precise here what to do of queen f6 so the move here is bishop d3 and then just give up the exchange like bishop c3 just take rook c3 and keep the game going so this is the way to continue but in this position tanya played triple zero which turned out to be a blunder it drastically changes the evaluation in black's favor because black has everything that he wants bishop into c3 the king is on the queen side the b file is open and black can attack on the queen side and at the same time white he doesn't have even a hint of play on the king side so this is looking very much in black's favor right now but tanya came up with some practical resources she ran with the king and uh, you will you will know what i mean she played a bishop d3 here and then after castles she started her journey with king d2 and after d5 she played king e2 i think these two important moves somehow helped her to neutralize the pressure and after d4 she played queen b5 and then after queen d6 she saw the drawback of queen d6 the g5 is hanging now it's not clear whether taking the pawn helps white or not but she went with knight g5 after f5 she came back knight f3 and uh, bishop d7 happened now black has various knight jumps as well as de3 threatened so she went back with queen b1 and queen c1 and i think this position is pretty unclear to me 
um, anything can happen here black could win white could win but in this particular game after rook b3 she sensed an opportunity to give an exchange sack with rook h6 i think that was very well spotted by tanya and after queen e5 king f1 takes takes you know, she completely changed the game in her favor so they reached an end game where white was uh, two pawns up uh, let me come to that position here so in this position um, she's uh, having five pawns and her opponent has two pawns but her opponent took queen a3 and after queen d5 checking f8 uh, she actually looked at other boards to see what is happening she realized that mary had lost so then she started continuing the game instead of taking the perpetual and she played rook b3 and then queen e5 black has this pawn where white also has this pawn but the difference between these two pawns is that this pawn on f5 is having the ability to create a mating threat but the same cannot be said about this pawn because after f6 you are already threatening mates so that helped uh, uh, tanya to win the game she got a king and i think she played some very uh, crucial moves like king f4 in this position and there are uh, no good checks even if you play queen d2 eventually king will hide so king queen d2 happened and then queen d1 happened and then there was an unstoppable checkmate because the queen has uh, uh, come to d1 and it is too far from the king on f8 so after king g8 she won the game with queen g7 here her opponent designed because after king e8 there is mate in one so thus India reached the target and are now in the finals. You can already see uh, while I was talking, I think you must have seen some snapshots of uh, the celebrations of Team India. So yes, um, we have uh, the finals at 6.30 p.m. as usual. And uh, you can see that uh, India will be playing against Chess Federation of Russia. And um, I will already mentioned in uh, the group highlights that India was very close to a win against Russia when they played in the pool stage and I think India has a great chance. So if you look at the team, then they have uh, Gurachkina, Kostinovic, Katrina Lagno, Polina and Alina Kashlinskaya. And uh, yeah, I think it's uh, going to be a great match again and I'm very excited. Do send all your best wishes for Team India. I think they are doing great. Uh, they gave up, they gave everything in this match against uh, uh, Georgia and it was also thrilling to watch again. Another exciting contest awaits us. Do watch the broadcast on chess.com slash TV. I'll be back with another video soon. Until then, take care. Bye bye.